Hi everybody, this is Ellie. Thanks so much for joining me today for a video where I share my sticker collection and how I've organized all of my planner and journaling stickers. I've been reorganizing for a few weeks now and I've shared some of the process on Instagram stories. A number of you said you would be interested in seeing the final result, so here we are. I was also super inspired by a couple of friends who recently shared their sticker organization. I will link them both up above and down below. Robin at Talks from the Heart shared her stickers and the books and style she uses to organize and categorize them. And so did Morgan from Morgan Plans. We're all doing something a little different with quite a bit of overlap. And I just think it's really fun to see how people organize, categorize, store their goodies. Plus stickers are so cute. It's fun to see people's collections. I do apologize that there will be quite a bit of glare. I think in this video, it's the lighting situation that I have and hopefully it's not too frustrating. I think the best place to start is to explain what I used to use, what hasn't changed and what has changed. So when I first started collecting stickers, I got a couple of these books from the dollar store. They just had these photo sleeves and they worked well for a short amount of time. You guys are probably familiar with the rabbit hole that sticker buying can be. I also grabbed a couple of these. These were four by sixes. I have since cut them and same thing. They filled up too quickly. And the other thing that I found frustrating was that when I tried to categorize stickers in here, every time I got a new sheet, I felt like I had to rearrange the whole album. And that became very frustrating very quickly for me. So from these thin albums, I moved to this giant binder. I have used this for well over a year now. I didn't film a video of this on YouTube. But I do have stories saved in a highlight on Instagram. This is a three and a half inch binder from Staples. And this system was inspired by Carolyn at, I believe it's XO Carolyn. I will link her video up above as well. At this point, I was getting a lot of character stickers and I wanted to be able to categorize them and add to different categories without rearranging everything. So that is why I thought a binder would be perfect. I grabbed these dividers, which I loved, and I have 16 of them in here. So I really broke down the categories and I used page protectors to put the sticker sheets in. So I had these ones here, which were great for sticker sheets from the Coffee Monsters Co. Once More With Love. So it's smaller than a true four by six, but they fit perfectly. And then I also had sheets that fit five by seven. Let me see if I can find one. I will also mention that I won't be linking all of the sticker shops I mentioned that would take me hours but I will do my best to link the current supplies that I've been using to organize my new systems. So here are the five by seven ones. They are shorter than the other ones, but they all worked out just fine. I also had these sleeves that were sized for like collecting cards, Pokemon cards, or, you know, playing card size. And I've repurposed those as well. So I will show you those. I'm going to just quickly run through the categories that I had in here so that I can show you how I've broken that down into my current system. So I had mood, planning, reading and listening, icons, relationship, food and drink, entertainment, decorative creatures, decorative other, which was kind of more like floral or anything that wasn't in, you know, animal or character, functional, seasonal, Hobonichi Weeks kits, die cuts and samplers, vinyls. I subscribed to Sticky Club for three months a couple years ago, so I had a section for that, and cards for the journaling cards. So this was totally full. There are still some things I need to take out, but I did go through and remove every single sticker sheet, which actually, let me show you which was quite the process. So yes, I have a large collection and 
I'm really happy with how they're organized now. So this worked really well. It obviously took up quite a bit of space. And the other thing that I found was that I didn't pull it out as often as I wanted to. It just sits on a shelf a little bit out of the way. It doesn't fit on my desk because it was so big and I simply wasn't getting into it as much as I wanted to. What I decided to do as kind of a companion to this was order a reusable sticker book from Once More With Love. She sells these in two sizes, the A6 and the A5, and this is an A6. I really love this. I have a pocket here from Planner Monkey Co. And here's where I'll put stickers that I still want to place in here before they get sorted elsewhere. I used a label maker to categorize them and then I've just filled them in. This really needs to be updated and have current stickers put in. I haven't done this since I first got it. So this was working really well. I love how slim it is and how great it is if I'm just taking journaling on the go with me. But I was finding as a companion, if I filled up any of these categories, then there was no way to add in another page. I had to go to the back and I just didn't like having things separated like that. So I knew I really, really loved rings for my overall storage. And then I decided I was going to use rings, but go much smaller. I will just add that the cover here, these are printables from Z Darling. So I had printed these ages ago. You can see like this, they are different sizes. It was the same coloring sheet, different sizes, but I just cut them to size and slip them in. And I love that black and white feeling. So it's great how she designed these so that you can put four by six journaling cards in here, or she sells, uh, I think, cards for different categories maybe. And I just love that little detail. And this is the heart and soul of my new sticker storage solution. This is an A5 size Avery binder. Let me show you in comparison to the Beast. So you can see it's quite a bit smaller, as is the spine. I will say at the outset, everything that was in here is not in here. I did separate into different areas and different solutions and I will explain why as I come to them. But basically what I did was I sat down and I thought what am I going to do with all of these stickers? People have stickers for different reasons. Some people are collectors. Some people only buy what they immediately need and will use. And I kind of fell in between that. Well, I can say I wanted to buy and use them all, but what was happening is I grabbed way too many, way too fast. So I, there was no way to use them all unless I was massively stickering every day. I also found that I wasn't using them. I was doing way more hoarding than I wanted and being scared to use my sheets. Some of that was because I wanted to save them and some of that was because I just wasn't getting into that big binder and pulling them out and figuring out where to use them. It was too much work and I like things to be as simple and streamlined as possible. So this binder here is for the stickers that I would like to use in my planner. In my mind, that is separate from what I would like to use in my daily journaling pages because I journal in a Hobonichi A5. So those are big pages that for me can handle bigger stickers. These are more of my character stickers, the smaller stickers that I will use here and there in my bullet journal, whether it's an A5 or a pocket size. And I like having that separation. The other thing I decided was that using the sleeves to hold my sticker sheets, while they are great, they're made really, really well, they protect them, they are also an extra step that I just didn't want to deal with anymore. So I grabbed some reusable sticker paper off of Amazon and that is what I've used in here. So the paper comes in a package like this. It actually comes in a larger plastic package that says do not eat on it. 
the brand is Be Yumi, or maybe it's Be Yummy, since it says do not eat. But it comes in a full size, and I just cut it in half with my guillotine cutter. This binder is a three ring binder. So even though I have a Rapesco six hole punch, I needed to adjust one of my standard hole punches to hole punch all of these sheets. So I will just show you, maybe this is a really common practice. I didn't know it until I saw someone making sample cards, I think for ink swatches, but he made a bumper. So I just washi taped down some coins here so that when I lined up my paper it was always at the same height because otherwise you can have small differences and that's the kind of thing that bothers me so this really helped prevent that. I can't remember how many sheets came in this but I will link this down below. I will also say I have only been using this for a month or so so I cannot vouch for how well it holds up long term. I will say that I am happy with it now. Once I put the stickers on it I do put them under a heavy dictionary to help them adhere and stay flat. And that seems to have really helped. But just as a heads up, I'm not comfortable vouching for it at this point for the long term. And now let's get into this. I'm really excited. I love this setup. So I had this vellum from the Coffee Monsters Co. from a couple of years ago. This was on my bigger binder too. Cut it to size, put it in here, super cute. So at first I thought I would make my own dividers, but I wasn't in the mood for that. So I did get these from Avery. They come in a pack of five and they say that they are erasable, but I didn't see on the package itself what I could write with until I looked it up on Amazon. I got these in person, but I looked it up on Amazon and they said you can write with pencil or ballpoint pen and then erase it. And I can tell you that that is true. I used pencil, I found it was better for me. I'm really happy with how that looks and I love that I can just erase it and change it up as I need to. Let me show you quickly how it looks with a pen too because when you can't see these things, it's hard to gauge if it'll work for you. So this is one of the pencils that I use. So it's kind of, it's a little bit inconsistent sometimes and the pen, just so you know, it will smear if you do that right away. So you do need to wait for some amount of time. But then you just go ahead with the eraser. I apologize if my camera's about to shake. Try and be gentle. See, if your eraser gets all the ink on it, then you just have to be careful it doesn't transfer too much. And there you go. It's not perfect, but I think it works really, really well. And as a tip, because this is a slippery material, I would run the eraser over once or twice before I wrote and it left a little bit of a grippier residue. So it made it much easier to write all my labels. Back to the binder itself. I mentioned that I was part of Sticky Club for a while. So I did have a couple of these sheets left over. These were hole punched for six ring binders, but I just stuck them in my three ring hole punch and that works just fine. I leave this one at the front for any stickers that I receive from friends in Happy Mail and I still have to decide where I want to put them or use them. I also thought it would be fun to have a sheet at the front with all of the shops that are in here or most of them. I might not have gotten all of them, but I love this. I love being able to remember the makers that I've been using and they're all just really cute. I have 10 categories in here. So moods, planning, activities, food and drink, wellness, adulting, functional, seasonal, decorative, and samplers. I'm gonna go ahead and do a flip through and show you guys how it's come together. So some sheets I didn't bother taking off and putting on here because they were so close together. I just went ahead and hole punched them. I would line it up in the hole puncher first to make sure it wasn't going to cut right through one of the characters and then I would just move them somewhere else on the sheet or to another sheet entirely. So these are some Molang characters. And then I just went ahead and put all of my stickers together. I love this. It is so much more functional for me. It's 
a little bit harder not having the maker with the stickers especially because I do love to reference that with you guys I love to show support to small shops in that way but most of them are from the same few shops and have distinctive characters so for example I know munchkins create with pen Bidu and co and if I wasn't sure that I would remember I did try to cut out their logo and put it there so I did happy moods not happy moods so here again rabbit hole handcraft i did put hers there if i put it here i didn't always have enough left over at the front then i have relationships under mood as well as well as character stickers that aren't really a specific mood but could still be used to represent a mood so this is really kind of mood and characters here I have some entertainment characters, some Disney princesses and Harry Potter. Then we move to planning. So again, these were so tiny, it wasn't worth taking them off. I don't have craft tweezers yet, but I think I probably should get some. So you guys have probably seen me use these ones a ton. I have the Instagram ones too. Look at all these cute planning stickers. I also have stickers for my YouTube in here, as well as Happy Mail. That all kind of goes together for me. Activities, this is the most general one. Characters that are doing anything specific. I put some more Malang ones together. For these ones, I peeled off the whole sheet backing and then just combined a few sheets together. So I didn't have too many of these. I will say, ah, here you go, with the different size sheets, sometimes the edge can pick up one of the ones underneath it. So one of the ways to avoid that is to put these at the back, especially if this is a blank one. But otherwise, I just try to be careful and you know, that's one of the cons to this type of paper. So listening, shopping, I have some Let's Plan It, Gabriella Elena Designs, traveling, baking, this is kind of camping or visiting, entertainment, baseball, celebrations, watering plants. This here, did not expect this to happen, but I had this sheet that was foiled behind here and this kind of picked up, I don't know if you can tell, but it kind of picked up some of the foiling. That's okay, I did put another sheet that I had from Crystal Create in front of it, and it didn't ruin any stickers, so that's fine. My washi stickers from Documented Journey that I love. See, these ones too, I've been saving them, but I'm putting them in here because I wanna use them. They're all beautiful. Food and drink. This is one of the ones where I took the Molang stickers off the sheet. I think it's easier to leave these ones on personally because they're all sized and cut out so differently that they almost fit nicer and more compactly on the sheet they came with. I put scripts in here as well. I don't keep a separate category for scripts because I like them to be in the category that they're in. So wellness, I have physical health up here what I consider mental health here, meditation, exercise. This is all kind of self-care, me time, therapy, and adulting. So work, paying bills, doing the budget, cleaning, functional, I have a lot of boxes and hopefully this way I will actually use them. I have some little icons to help kind of denote something important. I love these little watches for appointments. Seasonal, I have some weather stickers in here as well as those kind of you know, 2020, 2021 holidays. I had a lot of extras, so that was fun to put all together. These are all the Coffee Monsters Co. and Once More With Love. 
Lunar New Year emojis. Then we move into fall, Halloween, winter, Christmas. And then some of these were from Sticky Club. So these are all winter animals. Little Red Balloon Ink. This one, I didn't realize it was going to hole punch all three. I was used to just having two holes, so I forgot to move that guy. And then Decorative. So I have a number of the Swatelier stickers, which I love. I kept one of these and I just, I slid it like that so that if I need to put it behind to see, it helps because with the clear, <laughs> With the clear stickers, it's kind of a big jumble. But I love these stickers too. They are super cute and small, which suits my planning style. Got some date ones here. Again, these hearts were way too small to move, so I left it. And then just decorative. These are things that aren't alive. Some florals. These ones, after I put them down, I realized these would have been better kept on their sheet and with my larger stickers for journaling, but that's okay, I know where they are. Same with some of these bigger ones. So these are more floral and celestial, and then we move into creatures or critters. And then we move to samplers. So I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do with the samplers. I showed these before. The reason that I did cut them down was so that I could use them for samplers. But same thing, I was just never coming in here. One of the things I thought about was just taking the stickers off and putting them in their correct categories. But something that's hard for that is that I can't always remember where the stickers are from. The other thing is that I do the Stationery Stockpile Challenge collab with Dakshina. I will link our playlist. And one of the categories is samplers. So I wanted to keep them together so that I knew that I was actually using my samplers. What I decided to do was cut down some cardstock and just go ahead and tape them on with some washi tape. I just taped the top on because it's much easier to lift and peel. They kind of flap around, so you just have to turn slowly. And I did try to group them like this. One tip I have if you are trying to put some of the shop names with the stickers is that I didn't realize until I was done all these pages that I could have peeled off the Coffee Monsters Co. logo to put with some of her stickers, but now I know and I can pass that on to you guys. So you can see they just kind of flap around like that, but it's not a big deal. And I love seeing all my samplers like this and just having easy access to them. So sometimes, like I said, I'll peel off the backing and put a number of stickers together. And at the end here, I just put another sticky club protector and some stickers that I didn't put down yet. So I think these were just some that I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with. These were from a friend who made them. I love those. And these guys here, they were from Amazon and they would have been too bulky if I hole punched them. So I'm just keeping them here. I also had made this little holder sheet myself so I just used some cardstock and then laminated it and cut where the pockets were. I bought the Coffee Monsters Co. calendars for the past two years and these are the stickers that go with it. I haven't used them on the calendar and at this point I'll probably put them in with the functional stickers. These are repeats of sticker sheets that are already in here so I've just kept them up here and there's a couple of big ones at the back so these could go with functional. These are all the Christmas movies. So hopefully I use these this year. And some more box stickers from Avalon and Ninth that I already have almost a full sheet of these down. And in the back here, I just keep a couple of cards that 
you collect, I guess, the points from. So Paper Bits Co. and the Coffee Monsters Co. And that way, if I get any new stickers, I can just add the, the bean and the airplane. I am so happy with this. I guess I will say that some of the downsides are what I mentioned. These stickers can, if they catch on something, they can come up. These sheets also do tend to collect like dust or like those little hair fibers if they're left out. So all of my extra sheets I don't keep in here. I just leave in that original package they came in. But other than that, honestly, for me, this is great. I have already used these way more than I ever did before. And I don't mind having all of the different makers mixed together. I know that's not for everybody, but for me, I love having them categorized like this. And I love that this is also pretty portable. So even if I don't end up filling up my little spiral one, if I know I'm going somewhere where I'm doing some, you know, heavy duty journaling and planning, I would be happy to bring this with me. So the other things that were in that giant binder are now in these two systems. I have collected a lot of vinyl stickers over the years. I think going forward, I would try to make sure I had a space to use them before I collected them. That being said, these are all absolutely gorgeous and they're like pieces of art when I flip through. A lot of these I use as pocket decoration. So this is just a clear plastic duotang. These are those card sheets that I was referring to. And this is how I've stored some of these stickers. So I have a lot from Brie at Documented Journey, Robin at Journal Rhapsody when she was art journal girl and still making stickers, Eureka Art Studio, Studio Katie, which is now Studio Sisters, I believe. River and Roots, Protect Your Peace, she's no longer making stickers, Ghost Puff, Love Her, Cheyenne Barton, Lauren Phelps Designs. I have mentioned Brandy Kincaid before. I love her style so much. I subscribe to her Extravagant Hope Happy Mailer for six months. So I have a number of her vinyl stickers all here together. And then I also have die cuts in here. So I just put them in here so that I can access them if I want to use them in any of my setups. More stickers, some more vinyls. And then I use the four by six here just for the bigger ones that don't fit in there. So I have some name stickers here, some more documented journey. This is Allie Brown, Pumpkin Paper Co. Once more with love, Sojourner. Some more die cuts and then vinyl sticker sheets. I like having the vinyl stickers separate because I don't really use them on my journal pages. I find them too thick. Not these small ones, the small ones are okay, but the big ones I do like to use on like notebook covers, or like I said, I will reuse them as decoration. Brandy Kincaid at the back here. And these ones are the five by seven sheets. So I was able to repurpose all of my sheet protectors, which was great. And then in this binder, I kept all of the journaling cards. Well, that's not true. I didn't keep all of them. I kept the ones that I really loved. So this front section first is all Brandy Kincaid. Like I said, I can't say how much I love her art and her message. So I do send some of these on in happy mail sometimes, but I did want to keep them all together for now. And it's really lovely because I find that these really speak to me when I need them to. <laughs> so I like having a place that I can come and find them all. She also includes good words for later. So I like to keep those in the envelope so that I can just pull it out and be reminded of whatever I need to read at that moment. She had some smaller ones. She also includes playlists and book recommendations. So all of that is together here, as well as the letters that she sent every month. And then here are some journaling cards that I've collected. So the Coffee Monsters Co. That one was written by Helen herself, so I just left it so I could read it. And these are great to have. I don't really use them that much. This is a note from Rowena from Sojourner. But I do like to be able to flip through them. 
And this section is the cards that I get with different orders. So I remember which makers that I've ordered from. And again, these are always super cute too. So happy to keep those all together. And I think that's it. Yeah, except for a couple of extra sleeve protectors I have in here. I originally thought I wanted this section with all my vinyl stickers, but I realized I use those in totally different ways. So there was really no point. So really it's these three things that came out of the large binder. And for me, much, much, much more functional. This is something I had before, it hasn't changed. It's just a dollar store basket that has my sticker books. I don't buy these a ton for myself anymore. Most of them are gifts, which I'm happy to have. These are old stickers. Some of these, especially towards the back, aren't stickers I really use anymore. They mostly appear in my stationary stockpile challenge videos, which makes me feel great because I do have a home for them after all but I will probably end up passing these along at some point in the nearer future. Cultivate What Matters, my favorite homebody sticker book. This one I definitely bought for myself. And yeah, I just keep those together and will mostly use them in my journaling because they are much larger. And finally, we get to this basket system. Do I have enough stickers for you guys? I know it's a lot, especially when you look at my planning style and I don't use a ton. But this is a collection that I've built over maybe two and a half years and I'm getting really good at honing in on my style, which I do have a video coming on that at some point. I have a friend who has asked for it and I just have to write some notes down and get organized, but I promise it is coming. But anyways, I am getting better at honing in on my style, which really helps when it comes to sticker organization and I can gift a lot away as well. Let's start here. I have this case that is a gum case, I believe. We can't get these in Canada, or at least I can't find them anywhere. If there are any Canadian friends who know where to get these, I would love to get more, but I won it in a giveaway from Hannah at Caffeine and Paper Co. So I won some of her stickers here, and this is where I keep all my minis from the Style Planner. I have a couple of Swatelier ones that I've cut down to fit in here, and a ton of Planner Monkey Co. ones. So I keep them in here and this is great, they're protected. I've also shown this before, I keep this with my bullet journal. So this is from Hobonichi. Here's where I have my most used mini stickers and this is nice and slim and fits slipped in the back of my bullet journal. I also got this for the minis. So this was from Planner Monkey Co. It is super cute and it holds a lot of her stickers that said, it's just not the most functional or portable for me because it has this wide spine. Right now, I'm just keeping in it the doubles of sticker sheets that I already have in either of those two setups. And that works really well. It just sits here and it's super cute. Now, these pouches I absolutely love. This is a little tag that came off. I first heard of these from Sarah Martinez. So I have some in the B6 size and some in the A5 size. I have gone ahead and sorted a lot of my journaling and washi stickers in here. I'm not going to take them all out because it would be a mess, but they're loosely categorized. Like these ones here have even smaller pouches in them. So this is books and stationery. So it's helpful to just be able to grab a couple of these pouches. These ones are butterflies miscellaneous. I get a lot of stickers like this from friends in Happy Mail. So I do like to put them in here and these will be great to use in my Hobonichi Cousin. I love washi stickers because they're so thin. These ones are florals. Here, <laughs> this is, this is probably, I don't even know what to say about this. I went vinyl sticker crazy at one point. I don't know why. I don't think I quite realized that vinyl stickers are, well, vinyl. Uh, they're thicker. I don't have that many water bottles or anything to use them on, and I don't love using them in my pages because they are thick. I placed an order with Redbubble probably two years ago now, and I've used some of them, but I have so many, and I just need to start using them. I need to stop hoarding them and start using them. I don't even know if it's a hoarding so much as I don't know where to use them. 
but these are probably my most frustrating stickers because I know my little character ones I will use, but these ones I'm just not sure of. Again, I know I can always pass them on in Happy Mail though, so it's not a total waste and I've definitely learned a lesson from it. These bigger ones, this one has adhesive pockets. This here is my biggest journaling one probably. It's just all miscellaneous sticker sheets and you can see what I mean when I say bigger size. These are from Sticky Club. I love these girls, you'll see them a lot. These are beautiful. So all of these are for journaling and it's great for when I pre-decorate my cousin pages, which is something I really enjoy doing. I like that these are clear enough that you can see through them too, it really helps. And here I have kept all of my Hobonichi Weeks kits. I have a Weeks right now, I'm not in it consistently and I'm not using kits, but these are the ones that I wanted to keep. What I've done is just used a little piece of washi tape to tape kits with more than one page together. And that just helps me stay organized. And yeah, here they are. I've got a couple of, you know, extras here, some weekend stickers. I like having those in one spot. These are washi stickers from Note and Wish and some that I ordered from Allie Brown. These ones are what I consider my functional stickers. So I have the monthly ones that I use in my bullet journal, as well as a number of dot stickers and some alphabet stickers. And lastly, we have my Hobonichi Cousin Kits. So I have shared these before. I do have a lot of them and I have organized them in a way that hopefully helps me use them more for the rest of the year. So far, so good, actually. I've been more in my cousin weeklies and less in my cousin dailies, so still finding that balance. I also ordered a couple of journaling kits oops, from Planner Monkey Co. at one point. I have kept them in here because I know that I'll use them in the cousin. They're super cute and I love that they're on transparent paper. I just keep these on my desk and I can pull out whatever pouches I'm in the mood for or just carry the basket if I'm journaling somewhere else in the house. I know I keep saying it, but I'm really happy with how this is working so far. I went into this with the intention of organizing everything in a way that would work really well for me and how I journal and plan and also knowing my tendency to not want to go into any sleeves of any sort or being tempted to hoard sticker sheets. By putting them all down on here, I really helped myself come out of that mentality a little bit. Like some of those princess sticker sheets and Harry Potter sticker sheets, I spent a lot of time thinking, maybe I should just leave them like this. You know, there's only one of each character on some of them. And I said, nope, you know what? Let's put them down. I'm someone who really wants to use my stickers. So this will hopefully help me do that. Sticker collections come in all shapes and sizes and organization styles. And I hope that this has maybe given you some ideas if you're looking to reorganize yours. If you have any questions, you are more than welcome to ask in the comments. And if you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.